This is the download from Sounds Profitable, the most important news from this week and why it matters to people in the business of podcasting. I'm Manuela Bedoya. And I'm Shreya Sharma. Today, U.S. podcasting revenue is up, Google launches a new way to collect data, and a new partnership aims to bring ethics to advertising. Let's get to it. This Tuesday... Rain News' Brad Hill reported on the Q1 earnings call of audio distribution platform Odyssey. CEO David Field cited a strong growth in digital revenue, but we're really interested in their reported 37% podcast revenue increase. Odyssey's apps offer a generational divide-bridging service, offering a place to access both terrestrial radio stations as well as on-demand audio in the form of podcasts in the same place. And it appears that Odyssey is aiming to take advantage of their broad audience. Brad Hill reports from the earnings call, A key forward-looking emphasis of the call was the Odyssey Digital Audience Network, a scale-and-reach initiative which was launched during the quarter. Field described it as an addressable and aggregate of over 60 million listeners across our app, streaming content and podcast lineup, enabling precision targeting at scale coupled with real-time optimization and reporting. One of many podcasting social media staples is sharing platitudes about how the industry is always growing, always doing better. This Monday offered a wonderful moment where one gets empirical data to back them up. The United States podcast ad revenue market hit a billion dollars for the first time in 2021 and shows no signs of slowing down. Anthony Vargas writes for Ad Exchanger, quote, at $1.4 billion, up 72% from roughly $840 million in 2020, podcasting is now one of the fastest growing digital media channels, and it's growing twice as fast as the internet advertising market as a whole, according to a report on podcast ad revenue released by the IAB and PricewaterhouseCoopers on Monday. End quote. Growth has developed so quickly, just the U.S. market's 2021 revenue matched podcasting's global 2020 revenue. Vargas attributes a bulk of this growth to the increase of dynamic ad insertion, leading to a better ad placements. Regardless, things are looking good on the business side of podcasting. Last Thursday, Olivia Morley, writing for Adweek, covered the announcement of Havas Media Group partnering with the Institute of Advertising Ethics. According to Havas, they intend to offer an advertising ethics certification course to over 9,000 clients and employees. Here's a quote from the founding COO of IAE. Our industry astoundingly is virtually the only professional industry, unlike law, medicine, architecture, engineering, etc., that doesn't have any sort of industry code of ethics or certification for ethics said Andrew Sussman, end quote. As Sussman said, the IAE has identified a marked lack of training and focus on ethics and advertising. This, of course, has a trickle-down effect on the podcasting industry, as we've seen before with various sticky situations that companies and creatives alike create with brand safety or unintentional side effects of unethical systems. Ethics, according to Downing, can extend to many things, Some include issues of brand safety and ensuring that clients are not using discriminatory ad filters that impact minority creators. For example, putting LGBTQ plus on a block list. One needs only look at the tech industry's laundry list of issues with their army of engineers with no ethical training creating wildly unethical digital ecosystems. A more ethical advertising industry, if it takes advantage of the IAE and whatever competitors might arise, is indeed a better one. Up next, a bit of nostalgia looking back at the world that allowed podcasting to exist. Last Thursday, Ben Thompson of Stratchery posted an interview with Tony Fidel, the designer known as the father of the iPod. On the off chance there are members of the Downloads audience who aren't old enough to rent a car, the very word podcast is a portmanteau of iPod and broadcast, originally created specifically as a way to share spoken word to Apple's widely successful MP3 player via their iTunes digital media platform. With Wednesday's announcement that Apple has officially discontinued the iPod Touch, 
a vestigial remnant of the iPod brand, it's a good time to be nostalgic for the early days of the industry and reflect on how much has changed. Thompson's interview with Fidel gleefully partakes of nostalgia rehashing key moments from both Fidel's career and that of the iPod's development. Steve Jobs' leadership style from Apple's 2005 flash memory gambit, the interview invokes memories of a time when touchscreens were still exotic futuristic technology. This Wednesday, Google announced a new service titled My Ad Center during their annual I.O. event. Greg Finn covered the announcement for Search Engine Land. All Google users will now have the ability to choose the brands and topics most germane to them that what they want to see. This is much different than the topics targeting within the privacy sandbox now being tested, as the inputs are dictated directly by the user. At launch, My Ad Center will only be compatible with Google's search results, YouTube, and Google Discover. On the surface, this service promises better transparency with users receiving more granular information as to why they are being served a particular ad, and giving them the ability to fine-tune what topics they would prefer Google cater to. Of course, that's the corporate line. One of the recurring stories that's changing the industry and keeps appearing on the download is that of advertisers adjusting to stronger privacy on mobile devices and desktop browsers. People serving ads simply don't have the access to the hyper-specific data that they once did. And it seems that conveniently, Google has now put out a product designed to get users to give them similarly hyper-specific data points for free, under the premise that it'll make their online existence better. Speaking of weird ethics, the download is going to take a brief moment to report on someone reporting on our mothership. Sounds profitable. Tom Webster is leaving Edison Research to join Sounds Profitable as a partner. Webster goes into detail on his motivations and goals for the new position in Tuesday's edition of his newsletter, I Hear Things. Quoting Tom, On June 1st, I am joining Sounds Profitable as partner teaming up with Brian Barletta to help build something to make the podcasting space better for everyone. As a part of that, I Hear Things and its companion podcast will then be under the umbrella of Sounds Profitable, where I'll be a regular contributor. End quote. Webster aims to pursue his and Sounds Profitable founder Brian Barletta's common goal of making podcasting better. Being a veteran of research and presentations, he's broken it down into an easily digestible four pillars insightful content, industry-leading research, unmissable events, and peerless advisory services. Welcome aboard, Tom. And that was the download from Sounds Profitable. I know we went through these fast, so be sure to check out the links to every article mentioned right in your podcast listening app or on soundsprofitable.com slash the download. And thank you for sticking with us as we bring you the top stories you might have missed from the past week. I'm Manuela Bedoya. And I'm Shreya Sharma. Our producers are Brian Barletta and Evo Terra. Special thanks to Ian Bowell for his audio prowess, Gavin Gaddis for writing today's script, and to Omni Studio for hosting the download. And as always, thanks to you for joining us. Robot. Download complete.